Hey there, hope you're going well. I'm Jade the Beamer and welcome to my new setup. Yes, this is my book corner. Maybe I'll give you a bookshelf tour if you would like, but my aesthetic now is organising by colour. Also some Bob Ross vibes and uh, my favourite series on the bookshelf just in front of the camera. So very excited about this new setup. Apologies if you can hear the storm outside and also my roommates watching Space Jam. I don't endorse either either of those things. Anywho, so today I thought it would be nice to talk about something that pop culture has been vibing about the past year or so, and that is The Queen's Gambit. Now, I am a bit behind on this show. I know that it came out in 2020, so last year, and I did watch it last year, um, but I haven't gotten around to talking about it yet, so that's what I'm gonna do. I I watched it when I was feeling a bit under the weather, so I associate this show with like chicken soup now. Um, not sure if that goes with its themes, but there you are. If you haven't heard of The Queen's Gambit, it follows the story of Beth Harmon, who is at a girl's orphanage, and there she learns chess from the orphanage's janitor, um, and she falls in love with it and finds out that she's really good at visualising kind of the game and what's going on and stuff. And while she's growing up, she also struggles with drug addiction, so that's also a prevalent theme. And we follow her as she gets older and as she enters more and more chess competitions, and it all builds from there. It is set, I think, in the 1940s. Um, it definitely is a historical show, created by Scott Frank. There's one season of seven episodes, so it's a mini-series, I believe. So you can fly right through it. it has actors in it like Anya Taylor-Joy, Harry Melling, who plays Dudley in Harry Potter, and Thomas Brody Sangster. Overall, I did enjoy this show, but it wasn't my favourite, and I'll explain why. I rated it a 3 out of 5 stars, or a 75%. I did enjoy it, but I think it could have been improved overall. I just think that it lacked passion the show. I think it was very well done and very clever, but I didn't end up really caring about the characters that much. They all just felt very distant to me, and their personal motivations were pretty much just to win, just to be better than everyone else. And I didn't really end up caring about chess in this TV show, and the TV show is about chess. Uh, if you watch my haiku review, of the anime about volleyball, you'll find out that I got very obsessed with volleyball, to the point where I was considering playing it, which is a huge step for a book nerd like me. But I didn't feel that connected to chess, watching The Queen's Gambit. It wasn't really about the game, I don't think, or loving the game, it was just about being good at the game. So that was the main problem I had with that. I did find out that it is based on a novel, and apparently the novel is very good. I'm not sure how true it translates in adaptation, so maybe that's something to check out. And I think the author of that book also wrote another book about pool or snooker. Basically a Queen's Gambit version with snooker. Sounds fun. Anywho, that's all I can say without spoiling you. If you haven't watched The Queen's Gambit, go watch it, come back and we can discuss, okay? Okay. Goodbye people that haven't watched The Queen's Gambit, go watch it and come back. Goodbye! was kind of unfortunate because after I'd watched The Queen's Gambit I decided that I wanted bangs um, and my partner just kept calling me Beth Harmon and told everyone I looked like uh, Beth so that was fun. Um, they're growing out a bit now so I have to kind of push them away. Anywho, so Mr. Scheibel is the janitor that teaches Beth how to play chess, and she learns by just watching him, which I think is so cool. Like, kids are so smart. I don't understand why the orphanage gave, like, those tranquilizer pills to every student. Like, at the time, did they just think it was good for students? Like, not too sure about that. Even if they thought it was beneficial, like, surely forcing each kid to have one per day, like, Maybe that's not a good idea. <laughs> because of this, um, she ends up getting addicted to it and throughout the show can't really seem to function without taking those drugs and overdosing a lot, which is really scary. At the orphanage, she makes friends with this uh, really nice girl called Jolene who helps her out but also kind of supports her addiction, so, you know. <laughs> she gets taken out of the orphanage and adopted by this wife and her husband. Um, her husband didn't 
really want her but um his wife really wanted a kid so that's why beth got adopted and she lives in this house with them and goes to a regular school for the first time which is a bit jarring and she finds a chess club and she's like oh my god like it's gonna be really cool to be a part of this club like she's recommended to go there because she's really good at chess but all of the people in the club are men so that's uh that's unfortunate thanks patriarchy it was really really satisfying though watching her play all of them at the same time and beat them all classic so her mother her adopted mother gets kind of sick and needs the tranquilizers for a prescription and she starts stealing them and um eventually overdoses which is really sad i think her name's alma um she's really nice so as she um is kind of more and more supported by her mother and people at the school based on i guess her chess knowledge she gets entered into competitions for money and she goes to her first competition um, and meets this guy Towns there who's a journalist and she beats him which is nice. It was really cool how she supported that that one other girl at the competition. Girl power. And while she was in the middle of the competition she started her period for the first time and that girl helped her out. Oh my gosh, can you imagine the stress? I ain't got time for menstruation, I need to play this game. Anyway, so time goes on and we see her grow up into a fully grown woman. She's won uh, quite a lot of chess competitions. She um, enters them to win money uh, that she gives to her mum and they kind of live off of that. So she's very good at what she does and she gets paid for it. Eventually she makes it to, I think, the American national competitions and she meets this guy called Benny. Now Benny is Thomas Brody Sangster, um, who is apparently immortal. And he has this whole like cowboy aesthetic going on like he has a hat and like a long leather coat um and he kind of goads her and she loses for the first time which is a blow i think they actually end up drawing or something but due to like technicalities of the competition it counts as a loss uh, i think eventually they end up dating um and stuff like that and i also forgot to mention that during her first competition she also meets this guy called Harry, who is Dudley, and she beats him, and he's supposed to be like a genius or something. And later he comes around and they kind of have a thing going on, but he realises that she cares too much about chess and too much about winning, so she'll never care enough about him, and they kind of break up. It's really sad watching this addiction take hold of Beth, like she's not in control of her life, she drinks a lot, nothing really satisfies her anymore. It was nice to see that like 13 year old prodigy at the competition, that little boy, and she spent like two days drawing out the chess set with him. She's in the middle of a really important competition and her mum passes away she finds her dead and i think she died of hepatitis or something which i think is linked to alcohol poisoning or drinking or something like that so that was really sad um she gets to keep the house though that she grew up in and at this point uh her parents her adopted parents were um divorced and uh her adopted father doesn't want anything to do with her or her mum won't won't help her pay for the funeral or anything like that so not good with benny um it took me a little while to figure out what they were doing when they were doing the speed chess thing it's just like who can win like the doing the fastest moves um and she loses every time and i'm like stop playing like why are you losing all of your money to benny obviously trying to psych you out so she stays with him for a bit and meets this model Cleo and she's really nice and he also has like these other like nerdy chess friends which is cool. She finds out that Scheibel was really proud of her um, when she goes back to the orphanage but he's passed away but he she finds like all of these newspaper clippings about her like on his wall which is really nice. She gets invited to go to like the world competition I think of chess but she can't afford to go there because it's in Russia and she's not doing so great in the finance department. So her friend Jolene um, who she reconnects with is uh, a doctor I believe or training to be a doctor and she loans the money to Beth like this is a lot of money that she needs um, but she has faith in Beth and that's so nice, like that gesture. Go Jolene. So it comes time for her to face the best chess player in the world, apparently, this Russian guy called Borkov? Borgov? And he's like really scary, he's like very professional, trying to psych her out. And while she's playing, 
uh, Benny, Harry, and the other nerdy chess people are, like, listening and, like, playing out the moves and stuff and trying to help her. And it's so nice to see, like, the X-Squad, like, trying to help her. Oh my goodness. While she's been taking these tranquilizer pills, it helps her visualise the chessboard on the ceiling. I don't know why she really needs to do that, because it's, like, right in front of her, but sure. And she manages to do that for the first time without the drugs during this final match, so it kind of symbolises that she's over her addiction. Orgoff knows that he's in deep trouble because he asks her for a draw and she's like, no, no draw, I'm winning this thing. And she plays the Queen's Gambit. So like, that's the whole point of the show, is to get to this point where she is now the best chess player in the world. And it was really nice, like, the end sequence where she's like walking through Russia, all those elderly people who are playing chess on the street like come up to her and like will you play with us like oh my gosh it's you like you're the best and that's kind of the show so overall i thought it was really interesting um filmed very well very clever but like i said it did kind of lack that heart that i kind of need to connect to a show especially a show about something so specific those are all my thoughts please let me know down in the comments below if you liked the show who was your favourite character? Did you end up becoming interested in chess because of this? That would be really cool. Did you already play chess? If you have any tips, please leave them down below. I'm hoping to try my hand at it soon. Do you think she should have drawn at the end with Borkov? Did you think the X squad was cute? Please let me know all your thoughts down below. I'd love to discuss with you. I'm Jade the Beamer. Here are all of my socials. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads. I upload videos every Monday about pop culture, mainly books, TV shows, movies, poetry, writing, board games, and video games. So if you're interested in that, please make sure you're subscribed down below so you don't miss out on any future content. It's great here. <laughs> And as you can see, new exciting changes, so happy about that. If you enjoyed this review, don't forget to hit that like button down below, it means a lot. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll catch you next time, you little rooks. Goodbye!